So welcome everybody to our latest virtual town hall meeting. I am Brad West, the Senior Communications Officer here at the City of Palm Coast. And I am joined today by our Chief Development Officer, Jason DiLorenzo, our Code Enforcement Manager, Barbara Grossman, and our Code Compliance Supervisor, Louis Mendez. So welcome, we're here to talk today a little about, about code enforcement. Um, and how about y'all give us a little background of, of each of you. So we'll start with you, Jason. So as you mentioned, Brad, I'm the Chief Development Officer. Um, lived in the city for about 17 years and uh, have been uh, working at the city for uh, almost two. And uh, Chief Development Officer, uh, I manage uh, the community, de uh, community Development Department. And that includes uh, building, planning, and code enforcement. Barbara, you've been around for quite a while with Palm Coast and whatnot. And uh, so tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, yes, I moved to Palm Coast in 1992. Um, at that time in uh, 1992, ITT was getting ready to uh, pull out as the developer and they established uh, the Palm Coast Community Service Corporation, which took over the storm drainage systems and uh, uh, throughout the city of Palm Coast and some of the landscaping areas and the common area city, uh, well, ITT owned properties. Uh, I was hired by Palm Coast Community Service Corporation in 1993, uh, and then I took was the architectural coordinator, which was the enforcement of the deed restrictions. In 2005, the Palm Coast Community Service Corporation merged with the city of Palm Coast, and I have been a code enforcement manager for the last 16 years. Wow, thank you. And Lewis, how long have you been with us, and, and what's a little bit about your background? <clears throat> Uh, I started it, employment for the city of Palm Coast back in 2007. Uh, started as a code officer, then became a code supervisor, and now I'm a code compliance supervisor. Uh, before that, I did 20 years of law enforcement in the city of New York. Uh, just basic enforcement. I'm uh, just uh, basically concentrated on violent gangs and things like that. But, you know, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we're here today to um, talk about some one of our codes in particular that has we're recently doing a survey for. Um, so Barbara, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the history of the code? Okay. Um, originally, when ITT was here, as I explained before, um, they were the developer and they had several rules that they established in 1983 which were recorded in 1983, which were consistent of the Palm Coast Restrictive Covenants and Easements. And the corporation attracted people here uh, because of the fact that the buyers, it was a model environment uh, community by establishing restrictions um, in residential areas to keep with the harmony and to maintain the property values and essentially make it a so uh, showcase uh, city for people that would wanna come here. Uh, and it was planned and built and maintained on being an environmental community. And to date, uh, we, uh, you know, passed on those codes of ordinances have continued to fo foster the original deed restrictions that were uh, recorded in 1983. So the city adopted those covenants uh, when they established their first land development code. So many of those items that were, um, you know, placed on properties by deed restriction by ITT are now part of our code. So a lot of people think these might be new, especially if you're newer to the area, but these, these are uh, codes that go way back and there's a history behind them. Okay. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. So Lewis, this particular code that we're talking about, can you tell us a little bit about this, the, the code itself? Oh, well, it, it's in detail, it, it has a lot, <laughs> uh, but we probably want to concentrate mostly on what uh, working vehicles is what I think we're talking about. Um, uh, you know, the code covers from uh, excessive signage to equipment, to motorized equipment, to size of vehicles and et cetera. So what, can you tell us about some different types of vehicles um, and, and some examples for us, what we're, we're we're talking about. 
what you'll first see is it's probably a, a van that has a lettering that's under three that you know under the three square feet that's allowed. Um, uh, so things like that will be allowed. You'll see vehicles with a uh, with under three square feet. Also, that'll be allowed uh, currently. Uh, you know SUVs. Uh, and then you have lettering that's also that's a stick on lettering, you know, that's magnetic strips that's under the three square feet that will be allowed on these vehicles, you know, to include even, you know, smaller pickup trucks. So, so everybody understands. So currently under the code, anything under three square feet is, is currently allowed. Correct. To be parked in people's driveways and residential driveways. Great. So what, what are some examples of things that are, that are currently not in line with the code, not allowed? Well, currently what you'll find, uh, it's, a uh, it's those same type of vehicles with excess of over three square feet of lettering, you know, some, some vehicles that have wrap, uh, you know, advertising around the whole vehicle. Uh, you all have some vans, you know, carrying equipment and, and, and trucks carrying mechanical equipment also that are not allowed, uh, you know, currently, um, uh, you know, like tow trucks, box trucks, uh, et cetera. Um, uh, you also, uh, you'll also have buses, uh, limousines, you know, there's, there's all these type of things, step vans that are just not allowed currently under the code. So... Tell us a little bit about um, and, and talk to us about what what makes them out of compliance. Well, the, to start off with the excess of a three square feet of lettering of advertisement, that that right off the bat makes them you know not not uh, not in compliance at the moment. Uh, some of them will have equipment, you know, uh, ladders or, or mechanical devices to hoist vehicles or machinery. Uh, oh. Some of them are just too large that, that, that carry over in excess of a ton, uh, you know, which, which would be, you know, like tractors and dump trucks and, and et cetera, like that. So Jason, um, we, we talk about this, this, this code and, and discussion comes up um, quite every once in a while. And right now we're uh, having a survey. Uh, the council asked for us to conduct a survey based upon this one uh, segment of the code. Um, can you talk to us about uh, what what people say on both sides of, of this that you often hear? Sure, Brad. So we we get um, you know uh, correspondence from residents all the time asking about why. Uh, why I can't have this or, you know, or why, um, you know, uh, or that my neighbor does have this and they, they don't believe they should, right? So, and we have, we hear reasoning, you know, reasons for that all the time. So, um, you know, those in favor of change, you know, they, they may say something like uh, demographically, we're no longer a uh, retirement community. So, so they think conditions are changing. So we should uh, allow um, different types of vehicles. And, and those are opposed to uh, any changes, you know, may say um, something like, well, a significant reason why I chose to live here is for the aesthetic environment. Um, some other items uh, in, in favor, they may say something uh, that uh, allowing commercial vehicles overnight in the driveway is business friendly. And others may, uh, that are opposed to a change may say, uh, allowing commercial vehicles and driveways invites business activity into uh, resident, residential neighborhoods. Uh, the storing of materials, the loading and unloading of those vehicles at different times of the day. Um, it, as others in, in favor of change may say, uh, it makes it easier on our businesses and their employees to conduct business by using home driveways as their base. Uh, they don't have to go store the vehicle elsewhere. They can just leave from their home. And those opposed may say, well, business activity can, can occur early in the morning or late at night or uh, on 24 hour on call um, basis, which could affect their, um, you know, their quality of life. So other, uh, other things we've heard is that those in favor might say that uh, allowing commercial vehicles is respectful to business trades of people and their employees. And those opposed may say allowing changes, um, 
allowing the changes changes the residential character and is not harmonious with the community. Um, again, uh, some other ones, uh, those in favor of change may say that uh, vehicle graphics and, and signs should not matter and help businesses. And uh, uh, those opposed to any change may say that the, the city will be unable to regulate any content of the vehicle signs or graphic, graphics, and that's based um, in um, the uh, federal law. The Supreme Court voted on that, and um, so um, we would, you know, the city has no way to uh, regulate content on vehicles. Um, uh, so others in favor may say uh, this allows easy access to work supplies and materials, saving employees time and money. And those opposed may say that allowing the change will negatively impact residential property values for, this, for that reason. And uh, one other one, uh, those in favor may say that allowing this eases the financial burden on businesses and employees. And those opposed to change may say that commercial equipment, storing of chemicals and supplies do not belong in residential driveways. Quite a list. Yes. <laughs> and, and we do get, we get correspondence all the time, right, Barbara? Every day. <laughs> so, uh, and, and along with that right now, so we, we are running a survey um, to, to uh, gauge in, get input from the residents and the community that the council will review. So we are, we are running this survey right now. Um, and the uh, residents will see the survey in their utility bill. It's a one question survey. Um, it has been open since May 1st. You can also take it online. Um, and we've had, we've had uh, several, uh, several thousand um, submissions already. Uh, which is great and, and great to see that type of participation. Um, and you can go to palmcoastconnect.com or palmcoastgov.com to take the survey today. Um, and if, if you don't want to wait for it to come in your utility bill. Uh, and we look forward to uh, having more submissions. This will run through June 1st and we'll close it out. And the city council will review it uh, at that point after, after the results are in. So we look forward to everybody um, participating and um, we always encourage everybody to, uh, to be active and participate in their city government. Anything else you all wanna add? No, thank you, Brad. No, no thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.